G'day guys, got a microeconomics question for you today. More specifically, it regards consumer choice and the subsequent consumer demand relationships that it produces. So today we're going to determine bundles of goods that maximise consumer utility given a fixed budget constraint. And, after we've done that, we're going to change the price of one of these goods and calculate the relevant change in the consumer's efficient bundle of goods or the change in the bundle of goods which maximizes that consumer's total utility. And after we've done that, we'll be able to draw a function that represents our consumer's demand for a particular good and will illustrate how it fluctuates as the price of that good fluctuates. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so our question is that Daniel allocates his budget of $24 per week among three goods. We have to use the following table for the marginal utilities of good A, B and C to answer the three questions below. So if the price of A is $2, the price of B is $3 and the price of C is $1, how much of each will Daniel purchase in equilibrium? Now equilibrium is another way of saying how much of each of these goods will be in Daniel's bundle which maximises his total utility. So for part B, it asks if the price of A rises to $4 while all the other prices and Daniel's budget remain unchanged, how much of each good will be purchased in equilibrium? So again, how much of each good will be in Daniel's optimal consumption bundle? For part C, finally, we're going to use the information from parts A and B to draw a demand curve for good A. And we have to make sure that we indicate the price and quantity for each point on the curve and we label it. Okay guys, so one of the key takeaways that I want you to get from this video is the conditions which need to be met in order for any particular bundle to indeed be a optimal or a equilibrium bundle of goods, a bundle of goods which will maximise our total utility. Okay guys, I don't want to state the obvious, but as a rational utility maximising consumer, Daniel must in order to achieve an efficient allocation of his resources, i.e. the budget of $24 that he's going to allocate to the consumption of good A, good B, and good C, he needs to achieve a bundle of goods or a particular combination of good A, good B, and good C that when changed will reduce his total utility. Okay, so how do we know that when we've selected a particular bundle of goods that it is indeed a maximum or an optimal allocation of our resources. So there are two conditions which I think are the most important when finding these optimal bundles of goods and these are number one that we spend all of the income or all of the resources that we're going to allocate to the consumption of these particular goods. So in this case we need to ensure that all of the $24 is spent on the consumption of good A, good B, and good C. And the second condition, guys, is that the marginal utility of any good divided by its price is identical for the last unit of each good purchased. And what that means, guys, is the marginal utility of A divided by its price is equal to the marginal utility of B divided by its price is equal to the marginal utility of C divided by its price. Okay, so on to part A. So I've drawn up a table, guys, which is going to help us visualize or link together all of the pieces of information that we've been given thus far. So we've got the prices, the quantities, the marginal utilities, and the marginal utilities divided by the prices for each of good A, B, and C. Okay, so basically, guys, the best way to go about checking if we have optimal bundles of goods is just seeing which combinations of quantities of A, B, and C satisfy these two utility maximizing conditions. So what I like to do, guys, is I like to start with condition number two. I like to see which ones have equal marginal utilities per unit price. So what I've done, guys, is I've added this extra table down the bottom here, which gives us the quantities of A, B, and C in which the marginal utility of that quantity divided by the price is equal. So in this case, we have equal quantities of A, B, and C at quantity 1, quantity 2, and quantity 4. So each of these combinations of good A, B, and C fulfill our utility maximizing condition number 2. So once we've found each of our bundles which satisfies condition number two, what we've got to do is we've got to calculate the price of each bundle. 
and ensure that in order to satisfy condition number one, the cost of the bundle has to equal the budget that we've allocated to the consumption of the three goods A, B and C. So you can see when we consume a quantity of one of each good, it doesn't. We only have six rather than 24. Same with two. We get 12 rather than 24. However, when we consume four of each good, so four of A, four of B and four of C, you can see that the cost of the bundle equals the budget that we've allocated to the consumption. So at the quantity four, four and four, we have satisfied utility maximizing condition number one. Okay, in order to cut a long story short, we can answer part A of this question, i.e. how much of each good will Daniel purchase in equilibrium with simply four of A, four of B and four of C. So let's just write it up here. Cool. Okay, so on to part B, and the method that we're going to use to solve it is basically exactly the same as the one we've just done. The only change is the price of good A has risen to $4. Both the other prices as well as our budget constraint has remained unchanged. So what I've done is I've drawn up another table which again is going to help us visualize the relationship between each of the pieces of information that we've been given. And what we find is when trying to find combinations of goods which satisfy our utility maximizing conditions, there is only one combination of goods which satisfies condition number two. And that is the quantity of A is two and the quantity of B and C is both four. So what we then do is we work out, well, what is the price of this particular combination of goods? And we're very lucky that the price of this combination of goods is equal to the budget which we've allocated to the consumption of the three goods, $24. So we can be happy in the notion that this is also going to be a bundle of goods which at this new price level is going to maximize our total utility. So let's just write down the answer that we found for part B underneath part A. Okay, so on to part C, which is asking us to use the information from parts A and B to draw a demand curve for A. Be sure to indicate the price and quantity for each point on the curve labeled. Well, I think the person who wrote the question should get a D or a fail for grammar, to be perfectly honest. So the information from parts A and B, which is useful to us, I've written in the top right hand corner here. And we're really only concerned with the quantity of good A that we're going to buy. So we're really only concerned with this piece of information and this piece of information because the price remains constant for B and C for each scenario. So let's have a look at the information we got for part A. And we have, we're going to demand four units of good A when it's priced at $2. So when the price of A is $2, we're going to demand four units of it. So we've got a point here to make sure we abide by the rules of the question. We're going to put down the coordinates for it. And for part B, we demanded two units of good A when it was priced at $4. So we go down to two units of good A when it was priced at $4. And we put our coordinate point in again. So in order to get our demand curve, for good A, we then just draw a line between the two coordinate points we found using the information from parts A and B. Great, and so here we have our line which connects our two coordinate points and we've also labelled it the demand for good A. Okay, finally guys, I thought I'd just go through what I believe are some of the main takeaways from this video. So first of all guys, what we started with was introducing the notion of a efficient bundle of goods or a bundle of goods which maximizes our total utility given a fixed budget constraint. What we then figured out is we then figured out conditions which we can use to, once we've identified particular bundles of goods, basically ensure that those bundles are indeed maximum or efficient allocations of our resource or budget constraint. Okay guys, and finally, and what I believe to be the most important sort of skill that you could learn from this video, is how the manipulation of the price of one of our goods in the consumption bundle affects the quantity of each of the goods we're going to consume in order for our utility to still be maximized. So what we're able to do in this case, especially, 
is manipulate the price of good A, ceteris paribus, and then see how the quantity of good A responds to that changing price while still maintaining maximum utility at this budget constraint of $24 per week. Once we've done that, we're able to then graphically show this change and come up with a demand curve for the consumption of good A given particular price levels. So I hope the video helped guys. If it did, subscribe to my channel, give it a thumbs up definitely. I put out new videos on maths and economics all of the time and because I'm a relatively new channel, any likes or subscriptions really do help. So again, subscribe to my channel, like the video if it helped and if you have any problems with the video, don't forget to leave them in the comments section below. Also, if you have any other video ideas that I could use, I'm always on the lookout for new ones. But until next time, guys, just keep practicing, practicing, practicing. Eventually, you know, it will click and it'll all make sense. But most of all, enjoy your economics, please.